Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Jamaica now among leading countries for its clear up rate of cases at the parish court level. Jamaica Teachers Association urges Education Ministry to review its funding arrangements with schools. And later in sports, Jamaica's technical leader praises officiating at Carifta Games. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. Jamaica is now among the leading countries in the region for its clear-up rate of cases in the parish court. At the end of 2023, the net backlog in cases in the parish court was below 2.5%. Chief Justice Brian Sykes made that declaration at this morning's swearing-in ceremony for judges at King's House. There are not many courts in the region at any level that has achieved that level of efficiency. <laughs> And that was achieved two years ahead of the projected time frame. And a lot of work went into this. The judges of the parish courts, the attorneys at law, the police officers, the probation services, the, 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 the medical profession, all the persons who provide third-party documents to the courts have played a significant role in the parish courts being as efficient as they are. After years of neglect, a concerted effort is now being made to improve the country's dairy sector. This through partnerships involving the Jamaica Dairy Development Board and several tertiary institutions across the island. The most recent partnership was with the Mandeville-based Northern Caribbean University, NCU. Agriculture Minister Floyd Green says the partnership will see the institution developing 40 acres of fodder for the dairy sector, which will assist in a resurgence of the industry. The institution also received six heads of Jamaica Hope cattle from the ministry and a new milking parlor is to be constructed. Of significant importance, the Agriculture Minister says, is the research the institution will conduct and the training for farmers. Our agricultural sector cannot progress further than our research agenda. If you do not have a strong research agenda for agriculture, then you will always be lagging behind. Also, our agricultural sector cannot progress further than the capacity of our training. Because if you do not have people with the requisite skills to drive agriculture, then you will continue to lag behind. So today, what we're really doing is pushing our research agenda and ensuring that we partner with institutions that have shown great capacity in research and in training. And NCU stands front and center. Mr. Green says the challenges facing the dairy sector is due to decades-old bad policies. During the 90s, unfortunately, our dairy sector was decimated because of imports. So I'm here to say that will not happen again under this minister. That will not happen under this minister. Hence, this task to the mandava based institution from the minister. What we want from NCU is clear. We want the research work, right? We want you to look at the performance of our Jamaica Hope and to do the research work to help us to move that performance further. At one time, we were considered world lead. No, we're not seeing that. And if we're really going to move the needle in terms of dairy, we have to up our milk production. And that means we have to up the amount of liters we get from our cattle. So we're going to expect you to do the work in that. Also to do the work on our fodder banks and how we appropriately set up fodder banks and what type of grass is best suited for our changing climate. It's a task that President of NCU, Dr. Lincoln Edwards, says his team is up to. Our aim is to transform our existing dairy operations within the dairy unit into an all-inclusive, vertically integrated activity to include animal care, reproduction, feeding management, milking, and value-added processing that provides tutorial interface and commercial output. 
In the meantime, the Jamaica Agriculture Society, JAS, believes land previously used for dairy farming under the auspices of bauxite companies should be made available to farmers in the industry. JAS President Lenworth Fulton says there are farms available in Monique St. Anne, Grove Place, Manchester, St. Catherine and Clarendon. He contends that is necessary for any meaningful change in production. And lease these land to dairy operation because the research alone cannot move the nigger. There's a market here for 70 million liters of milk annually. We are only doing just about 12 now. And just to say to minister, we have to be quick with this. So I do congratulate the minister to be putting focus again on the dairy industry, but we have to get the dairy land into the hands of commercial farmers and use the three breeds we have now, the Jamaica Hope, the Holstein, and the Gerlanders, to produce milk for our people. There is a serious retirement crisis in Jamaica. That's according to financial advisor and retirement specialist Grace McLean. Speaking on TVJ Smart Jamaica this morning, she revealed that over 50% of the population do not have a pension plan. 80% of the working population of Jamaica don't have a pension plan. 80% of the working population. That's a, that's a great problem for the country. She says certain segments of a population like domestic workers can create a retirement plan. And we are resilient people. So what you find with domestic workers, a lot of time they, they work five, six, seven days a week sometimes because they are working in different households. Right. So, you know, it's for us to think that they don't have any money. You know, it, it's not true um, because some of them do have funds. Some of them do save. They do invest. Ms. McLean says with inflation at an all time high, persons should consider different streams of income to keep up with the pace. In the meantime, she's urging employers to encourage retirement planning among workers. Um, in Singapore. There is an example of an employer who helped her domestic worker for 22 years. Mm -hmm. That helper worked with her. She was a migrant worker. From, she's a Filipino. So she went to work for 22 years. And during that time, the employer sent her on a money management course, an entrepreneurship course, and then helped her to set up her business. No, that helper is 60 years of age this year and has three businesses. Hotel Harris Paris Hilton is in Jamaica in a show of support for the seven American boys who were removed from Atlantis Leadership Academy in Treasure Beach, St. Elizabeth, last month amid a probe into allegations of abuse. The boys returned to the children's court in Santa Cruz today. Now, Ms. Hilton, her husband, and an advocate who was a former student or a former resident at Tranquility Bay in St. Elizabeth, arrived via helicopter this morning at the St. Elizabeth Technical High School. They were escorted by the police to the courthouse where they greeted the boys before they entered for the proceedings. After the story came to public attention, Ms. Hilton posted on X. Attorney representing the boys says say the way in which a children arrive in Jamaica is concerning. She also says another homo located in the country is under the microscope. Certainly, I think might be a question that the judge might inquire about in terms of asking about why parents chose to do that in that fashion, but that's quite typical. And what's of greater concern to me is that there's another facility here in Jamaica with 150 American youth, but I think the majority of those youth are uh, American, and they, that facility I have serious questions about as well. And certainly this practice of transporting kids uh, where they are oftentimes pulled out of bed in the middle of the night, they don't know where they're going, uh, is a common practice. And unfortunately, you know, in some sense, you could even call that trafficking. She says the situation is grave. Here is why. I don't believe that it's licensed in any way in Jamaica. I don't believe that the Minister of Education has provided any um, certificate to allow them to provide education to the youth. This is completely unlicensed, completely unregulated, 
and which is also of concern, you know, because there's no oversight over programs like that. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, Leighton Johnson, is calling on the Education Ministry to review its funding arrangements with schools to ensure allocations made to schools are done equitably. Details from Karen Simpson. It's no secret that some schools need more resources than others based on a number of factors. It's why Jamaica Teachers Association JTA President Leighton Johnson believes that changes are needed under the current regime. Urgent attention must be given to those institutions that do not have consistent and stable internet connectivity, as well as those early childhood and primary schools that need assistance in establishing a constant and reliable network across their compounds so that everybody has access to internet wherever they are on their compounds. There must be an approach to outfit every school at all levels with interactive smart boards which have proven to enhance the teaching and learning process. The JTA president also renewed the association's call for teachers to be provided with the resources needed to transform the education sector. He warns corporate Jamaica to partner with educational institutions in this regard as well. We continue to urge our corporate sponsors to partner with our educational institutions to provide more mobile labs and other essential technological resources to ensure that our students receive the best possible educational ex experiences. Kerry and Simpson, TVJ News. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us, more stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Two persons were injured this morning along the old harbor leg of Highway 2000. It's not clear the seriousness of the injuries. TVJ News understands that the black Toyota Isis was on its way towards Kingston when the back tire blew out. According to eyewitnesses, the car flipped twice. This is the second crash this week caused by a faulty tire. On Monday, the tire of a bus transporting beach goers blew out in Ferngully St. Anne. This resulted in the death of a female passenger and the injuring of more than 20 others. And it's now time for the Business Minute. The cost of inputs for production in the manufacturing industry increased by an average 2.1% on an annual basis up to February. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica Statin says the inflation faced by manufacturers was influenced by a 5.3% increase in refined petroleum products. Food, beverages and tobacco inputs rose by 1.5% for the period February 2023 to February 2024. For the month of February alone, Statin says the producer price index for the manufacturing industry increased by 0.3%. Further afield, there's another twist in the saga in Truth Social's public offering. Owner Trump Media and Technology Group is suing two of its co-founders to eliminate their stakes in the company. The lawsuit alleges Andy Litinsky and Wes Moss made a series of reckless and wasteful decisions when they tried to set up the company that caused significant damage. Trump Media is asking the court to force them to return the 8.6 million shares they were to receive. At Tuesday's closing price, that would have been worth $444 million. And that's it for the Business Minute. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at oral cancer. So typically... What, what we will do first is we take a biopsy of the lesion. This is where we take a sample to send to the pathology lab for them to confirm that what we're dealing with is oral cancer. We will then also evaluate the common sites to which oral cancers will spread, such as the neck, the lung, the liver, and the bones. And we will do that using CT scans and other imaging studies. That's the health report in primetime news at 7. And now for today's healthy living tip. See your dentist regularly. 
get vaccinated against HPV, avoid tobacco, and screen for oral cancer. And it's now time for the top regional and international stories. In the region, the Trinidad and Tobago government says it will not be providing any military assistance to ensure security in Haiti. Foreign and CARICOM Affairs Minister Dr. Amri Brown said the government has provided financial support as well as human resources to CARICOM Good Office's efforts. However, it is not in a position to contribute military forces, police officers or boots on the ground at this stage for that particular effort. On the international scene, at least nine people have died after a 7.4 magnitude earthquake struck the east coast of Taiwan, the strongest in 25 years. Rescuers are working to free at least 127 people who are trapped in a tunnel after the quake caused landslides and collapsed structures. More than 700 others are injured and over 100 buildings have been damaged. The quake was followed by strong aftershocks including a 6.5 magnitude tremor. Multiple aftershocks as strong as magnitude 7 are expected in the country. And Ukrainian President Vladimir Velensky has signed into law a bill lowering the military mobilization age by two years from 27 to 25. Kyiv has faced heavy losses in the battlefield after two years of war, whereas Russia has benefited from a sizable advantage in manpower. The move will allow Ukraine to call up more people to replenish its reserves after volunteer numbers dropped. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Karian Simpson. Thanks, Gary. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Jordan Ford will have your midday sports report.